Today, I'm going to talk about how to protect your invention. I'm going to show you some great things to do to write that provisional patent application that truly has value. So stay tuned. Alright everybody, some people don't even know what a provisional patent application is. So let's start at the very beginning. And this here, the slide I'm showing you here, basically tells you what it is. And I found that on Wikipedia. But in my language, my terms, I'm going to tell you, when you have an invention, this is the first thing you should do to put that stake in the ground, to give you that first date that, hey, I've got something new, I've got something novel, and I'm going to start to protect it. It's a great tool. It's called a provisional patent application. We also call it a PPA. Okay, so what is a provisional patent application? <sighs> right, you guys, in simple terms, you have an idea, it's new and novel, and you want to start to protect it. You're going to file a provisional patent application. It's called a PPA. It gives you that first date that you came up with an idea because you want to claim to the world you're the true inventor. Okay, so what are the benefits of a provisional patent application? Well, first of all, it lets you test the market to see if anybody even cares. It also gives you the time to investigate. It's a very low cost tool. But the great thing about it is, when you file the first one, you don't have all the answers. There's a very good chance you're going to discover new things and you're going to have to file another one. So this allows you to file the first one and you can file multiple PPAs during that year because it's a year long and you can bring them all together and combine them right at the end of the year of the first date of that first filing. Wow. It's a great testing tool. If you went ahead and filed a non-provisional patent application, that gets expensive. That could be in the tens of thousands of dollars. And if you had new information, you would have to file another one. So a provisional patent application is a great tool to test ideas. It gives you patent pending status for one year and it's extremely affordable. So during this video, I'm going to show you how to write a provisional patent application that really has value. And no one's going to show you how to do this. No patent attorney is going to show you how to do this. You need to learn to do this yourself. The reason why no one's going to help you do this is going to take too much time and energy and money and you cannot afford for them to do the work you need to do. So let me show you how to create a provisional patent application that I call transaction ready. That it's going to have value not only to an investor, to a potential licensee, to anybody. It's actually going to protect your invention, but also the innovation, and you're going to use it as a selling tool. So what is a transaction ready provisional patent application? It's a document that shows that you know what you're talking about. It's a document that when someone sees it, it establishes trust because you're taking away fear. You're taking away risk. That's why it's so important to do this correctly. All right, this is the part I love the most. If you write a provisional patent application the correct way, it's going to overcome future arguments. This is the part that's really important. You have to understand if you write your provisional patent application correctly, in which I term transaction ready, it's going to overcome three future arguments. The first argument when you show your invention to a, to a potential licensee, a company that's looking for ideas, or you show it to a potential investor, they're going to look at it. The first thing they're going to say is, why are we paying you? Because maybe there's some similar ideas out there. Maybe there's some prior patents out there. If you write it this way and they look at it, they're going to see this and go, wow, you did a good job. We understand we should pay you. So that's the first argument. That's why you have to do this correctly. The second argument, if you file this correctly, that is a transaction provisional patent application, a year later when you file the non-provisional patent application, the real patent, which costs a lot of money, you're going to be submitting that to the USPTO and a patent examiner is going to get it. His job is to find the prior art. His job is to look at it and find things out there to reject your claims. And if you follow this the right way, you have a better chance of getting your patent issued. 
So that's that second argument you're going to overcome the patent examiner, why he's going to reject your patent application. Let me show you how to overcome that argument. All right. Okay, here we go. The third argument, infringement, copycats. You know, those guys, they're trying to steal your idea. If you follow the advice I'm giving you now, there's a very good chance you're going to make it a very, very compelling argument of why they should not copy your idea. All right. So the big benefit, when you write it this way, it's a selling tool, but it overcomes potential arguments. So what's really great about this, you guys, I like to look at provisional patent applications as a selling tool. Yes, you want to protect your invention, and I'm going to show you how to protect the innovation, but I'm going to show you how to write it so it actually sells your invention. It's a selling tool, and I'm going to show you how. So how do you write a transaction-ready provisional patent application. You need to be a detective. You need to gather information together. You need to be curious. But you need to write this in such a way that anybody could read it and understand it. It needs to be clear. It needs to be just so easy for people to put themselves in this situation to really understand the problem. And that's the first thing, the problem. Describe it in such a way that anybody can understand the problem you're talking about. You want them to, to feel like they're there, they observe it, they see it. So that's the first thing you need to do. Now, the second, your solution. That's your invention. Okay. You need to also describe your point of difference, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, in such a way that your solution to this problem, your invention, is very clearly stated. Right? Don't make it complicated. Make it very easy for anybody to understand. All right, the next, manufacturing and materials. Most applications do not include this information, and I think that's a big mistake. Most patents are not worth anything because they don't include this information. Now, how do you get manufacturing and material information? Because most of us don't know how to do it. Well, you need to watch how your product could potentially be made. Because if they can't make it, no one's going to pay you anything. So how do you do that? Well, you could watch YouTube uh, channels on information of how your things are being made. You could visit a manufacturing facility. You could even hire an ex-employee of some of these companies and, and understand how your idea could be implemented. And you could hire these people, ex-employees. You can find them on LinkedIn. It's not hard to do. Have them sign an NDA with work for hire language. So whatever they tell you, you own. But if you can not include this type of information in your provisional patent application, it truly has value and no one does that. You need to do that. Okay, next. Here's the big one. Here's the big one. You need to include workarounds and variations. Workarounds and variations. What does that mean? That means you need to steal it from yourself. Right? You, you need to come up with how, how many different ways could they, someone could come up with my idea. It's pretty simple when you think about it. If you steal it from yourself, not only are you protecting your invention, but you're really trying to protect the innovation. And when you do it this way, you're blocking others to, to, to not file a, you know, something that's a little different than yours. You're trying to give broad protection, and, and it's very important to do that. Okay, next thing, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute too. Tell a story, and you do that with drawings. A drawing's worth a thousand words, and if you, if you do a lot of drawings, good line drawings, they don't have to be patent drawings, but good line drawings that really tell the story, it makes it, it, makes it easier for people to understand your provisional patent application. Guess what? You have just wrote it in such a way, with all this information, it's transaction ready. Someone could take it and they could implement it. You've answered all their questions. You've taken away all their concerns. You've reduced some risk and you've told a great story. That's what you need to do. Okay, let's talk about that first thing I talked about, knowing your point of difference. And how do you do that? You're gonna do that doing a, a Google image search, a Google shopping search, and you can do that looking for prior, prior patents, prior art. What you're really trying to do is, is look at the roadblocks, the, the road bumps out ahead because your product will hit those roadblocks if you don't know what's out ahead. And if you know what's out ahead, if you really know your point of difference compared to everything else out there, you're going to overcome those arguments, especially with investors, potential licensees, 
but really with that patent examiner. So you must know your point of difference. Manufacturing, you look at the slide here, James is gonna show you. This is a product that I'm involved in called Fishbone. The equipment to put on this piece of cardboard with basically six holes runs at very high speeds. In fact, it's, it's built with ro robotics. Now, what do I know about manufacturing things like this? Not much, but I know how to get the information. I know how to find the right companies that can help me get that information and put that in my provisional patent application, right? So now it truly has value. How do you make it? So to find out how to manufacture it, a couple things you can do, go on the internet, go to a manufacturing facility, find the experts. Also know all the materials too. All right, I'm gonna show you, in fact, I need to give you kind of an idea about how to expand certain words that talk about maybe workarounds and variations. Here's a quick example. If I have a new, let's say, a bag. I have a new bag to put things in. And this bag has a Velcro closure. I can open it and close it because it has Velcro. Well, if I'm going to expand the way I'm thinking about this, if I want to put in workarounds and variations, I might say, look, it could be Velcro, it could be a snap, it could be a hook, it could be a zipper. In fact, it could be any closing medical, it could be any mechanical closing device. Wow, it just went from narrow to broad. But guess what? What if I said any way to couple and uncouple those two sides for me to get in it and close it up? I just included everything you could possibly think about. Those are the type of words that when you include in your provisional patent application protects not only your invention, but the innovation. Technical drawings. Hey, look, you could also send a photograph. You could even, you know, scribble notes and file it as a, file it as a provisional patent application. But just because you could, should you? No, you shouldn't. Use nice line drawings. Call out exactly what you want people to understand. Make it so easy for people to see exactly what you're trying to do, for them to exactly can see what your invention is. I also include a couple workarounds and variations because when I do that, I understand that a picture is worth a thousand words and it's really important to show your brilliance, show your invention. So include a lot of drawings. Okay, you guys, real quick, I'm going to recap it again. Transaction-ready provisional patent application, how do you do it? First of all, know the problem. Make it so simple anybody can understand. The solution, that's your invention. Make sure everybody's clear and you know your point of difference. Material, manufacturing, really, really important. Of course, the workarounds, the variations, you got to steal it from yourself. And the drawings, a drawing is worth a thousand words. When you put this all together, now you can tell a story. That's all it really is. It's telling a very compelling story that's gonna overcome arguments. Make it very clear, very simple for people to understand. And now it's a great selling tool. So when you create a provisional patent application that's transaction ready, you've done something most people will never do. In fact, what you've done, you've created a tool to sell, to license your invention. So what are the benefits? I want to talk about once again, it's going to help you get potential licensees interested. It's going to overcome arguments. It's going to get people that want to license it from you. It's going to help protect it. It's going to provide confidence for someone to work with you. But you know what it also does? It allows you, if you want to start a company, to bring a team together because you know what you're talking about. All right, I want to go through some of the benefits, you guys, when you do it this way, when you start when you create a transaction-ready provisional patent application. It takes away risks. It provides a clear roadmap, answers all the questions, overcomes the, arc, the obstacles. It covers all aspects of your intellectual property. It gives people confidence to move forward with you, increases your chances to obtain an issued patent, stops potentially infringement, and not only protects your invention, but now it protects your innovation. All right, now I went through a lot of information here, and I know for a lot of you it's gonna be, holy cow, Steve, this is really overwhelming. If you need help, make sure to reach out to me. You can reach out to me, reach out to InventRight, we can help you. Also, we have a great program called Smart IP that when you combine this great information, with the software that helps you write it, it's gonna be fantastic and it's extremely affordable. Okay, subscribe down below if you like this video. I will see you next time.